Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass, and today we're headed out on the water. We've got beautiful conditions to go out and do some fall transition bass fishing. I'm not totally sure what to expect today. We've got everything from bait finesse to flipping sticks tied on and on deck. If that tells you how ready I am for the pattern. We're far enough in the south here that there's still a lot of grass. You know, we've been talking a lot about how grass will start dying back, fish pull the hard cover, but on this particular fishery, it's behind. It's farther south, the grass is still strong. I expect the fish to be in it, but I don't know if we'll be able to power fish, flip and frog, I hope so but we're prepared to go all the way down to bait finesse fishing if we need to. We'll probably start out with a soft jerk bait. That's sort of that good in between where we can see if there's a reaction bite, we can see if they're up in the grass, but we're not asking them to come all the way up and you know blow up on a frog or something like that. So we'll probably start there and then we'll just adapt as we go. Well, that didn't take long to get our first fish. We're about 10 casts in. I decided to start with a whiplash shad. You guys can probably see this scattered grass up here behind me. That fish was in that grass. We are on the Tennessee River today. The water fluctuates, so it's down right now. You can see all the wet rocks, and that's why the grass is exposed. So I thought I'd start out with a soft jerk bait and just cover the edge of that grass and I think we've got a good plan. Another good one. You can see the grass that that fish was down in. They use those grass edges to hunt the bait fish. In this case, shad. The shad work along those grass lines and the bass just jump out and ambush them. Well, those first couple fish give us a lot of information, right? They were up on a grass edge they were willing to chase, willing to eat, and even more than that, I saw a shad ball, a bunch of minnows, running down one of the grass lines, which tells me the fish are setting up perfectly for ambushing. So we're gonna make a big run now, uh, down to where I think there's going to be a lot more grass, and uh, we'll just start breaking it down. We'll see what happens, let's go. That was awesome. He smashed that frog. It's a Spro bronze eye. I mean, he's got it choked. Look at that just inhaled that thing way back there. There's a little like walking bridge, a shadow under it. I threw all the way back and he cracked it. Nice 
That'll work right there. He absolutely smashed it. That's a 4.75 swammer on an owner beast hook. That bridge has current coming out from under it. And I'd already made half a dozen casts, but I brought one way to the side, went right down the riprap edge. That's where he was. That's fun right there. Throwing that Spro bronze eye again. Beautiful fish. Just going with a, a general bluegill color. Something that's in that bluegill-esque family. So these fish that are on these grass lines, they're chasing shad and they're chasing bluegill. And the bluegill is the larger of the bait fish, obviously. So with the frog, I try to throw that bluegill pattern a lot. The last couple of years, this has really become a thing for me because I feel like they think it's a bigger meal than it is. And it's oftentimes the good quality fish that take a shot at it. Let's keep going. Got him. Nice fish. This style of fishing, frogging, flipping, I think it can be overwhelming for a lot of anglers because you don't really know where to go. If you look behind me, that cheese goes forever. And when I say forever, I mean, realistically, they're all 50 to 100 miles of cheese. Oh, bass just blew up right there. It was worth a try. So how do you know where to fish? And some of it is time on the water, right? Trying places, going back to places that have had fish before. But the main thing for me, wow, it just got windy. The main thing for me is that when I pull up to a mat like this, the first thing I'll do is shut down my Yamaha and I just sit there and I listen. What I want to hear is sound. Sometimes when you pull up to a mat, it is silent, dead silent. What that tells me is there's no bait fish, no bluegill, nothing moving, no activity. So either they're super inactive or they're not there at all. If I pull up to a mat and I hear popping, that tells me there's bluegill feeding on the mat. Maybe there's some other bait fish around. If there's activity, the odds go way up that there's bass. So the first thing I do is I'm pulling up on these mats because a lot of the places I've stopped today, I've never fished in my life. I'm just listening. This mat that we just got to is the loudest mat that I've heard all day so far. And we immediately started getting bit. fish again. That was awesome. The spot I'm fishing now. I've moved right out on the main river edge and this is a true shelf. It just drops on that grass line. The boat, the boat's in 10 feet of water. 
and there's cheese right there. So underneath that is hollow and you could flip and punch it, but I'm frogging the edge and I actually saw that fish come out of the shadow, look up and smash it. That was awesome. Ooh, that one was way out there. If it feels like or looks like I'm catching fish on every cast, earlier I was, but I'll bet I just went half a mile of frogging and flipping without so much as a blow up or a short strike or anything. It seems to turn on, turn off, turn on and turn off and I have a variety of baits that I, I, even when I'm heavy cover fishing, I fish like it's a system. So what I mean is I've got my Spro on, but I also have a Jackal Kaara. The Kaara is in a shad color. It's a smaller profile than the Spro. With my flipping baits, I have the exact same bait on two rods, but on one, it's an ounce and a half and the bait is black and blue. On the other, it's one ounce and it's a green pumpkin. The idea with both of these is that when things are going good, I use the bigger bait, I try to get the bigger bite. With flipping, I throw that black and blue, I throw it in the thicker cover. But then when things seem to tighten up for whatever reason, I go to the smaller frog or I go to the lighter flipping bait and I fish more of the outside edge. So even when I'm heavy cover fishing, it's still a system, I'm still fishing with intention. I bring all of that up to say, I was one cast away from setting this down and picking up that Kaara. I was only gonna go a little bit further with the Kaara and then I was gonna make a move, but we got another bite. Chatterbait fish. Throw on the jackhammer, the 4.5 spunk shad on it. What I've done, I've made another move. You can see that wind has picked up. It's blowing pretty strong. So I came to an outside grass edge. I'm way offshore, but I'm still shallow. Like less than five foot. There's good grass that comes up with about three or four feet of the surface. And I'm taking the chatterbait, just covering water over the top of that grass. Oh my gosh. Whoa. That was awesome. It's not awesome that I missed it, but what a bite. Wow. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. Today was a lot of fun. It was just a pure power fishing day, which I love. And it's such a stark contrast because it wasn't very long ago, we went out and did some bait finesse fishing together. Uh, you know, I love power fishing, but I love finesse fishing. I, At the end of the day, I like catching bass. But if I had a choice, power fishing is my main thing that's what i grew up on and sometimes i take for granted like the frog tim and i have so much confidence in frog fishing we catch piles of fish doing it but i remember back to when a frog was this like untouchable thing that i wished i could catch a fish on and i know some of you are in that same spot hopefully today gave you some confidence uh I wasn't doing anything particularly special. You know, those little nuggets about listening to the mat, trying to hear the bluegill, that will give you a huge 
head start. After that, it's just putting in the time, throwing that thing. I am walking the frog, which we've taught how to do in the past, uh, but it's just a very subtle walk. If you can't walk a frog, I promise you, you're hitting that frog too hard. You want to just barely touch it, like as soft as you would work a drop shot worm. That's how you get a frog to walk. But you can do this. It's not complicated. Heavy line is key. Heavy rod is key. You know, I'm using 65 pound braid on my KR. I use 50 pound. Uh, and then I'm using from Shimano the X Pride 73 Extra Heavy. That is both Tim and I's favorite frog rod and has been for many, many years. It takes a lot of power to set a frog because you have two large jig hooks and you have to set them both at the same time, especially on a big fish. It takes a lot of power to be able to do that, but you can do it. You can figure it out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed coming along today. I really enjoyed the fishing uh, and I hope that uh, it was beneficial for you as well. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.